Welcome to the Trend Micro Deep Security video series. My name is Nick Russo and I'm a customer service engineer on the Hybrid Cloud Support Team. In this video, we're going to cover the configuration of the application control module. We'll go over the different enforcement modes in maintenance mode, as well as creating rule sets and monitoring activity from application control on the actions page in your Deep Security Manager. At the end of the video, we'll also have a quick example of accessing the application control rule sets via the DSM Automation API. Application Control continuously monitors for software changes on your protected servers. Based on your policy configuration, Application Control either prevents unauthorized software from running until it is explicitly allowed, whitelisted, or allows unauthorized software until it is explicitly blocked, blacklisted. Which option you choose depends on the level of control you want over your environment. The Application Control module will log an event any time a software change occurs on an endpoint. It is not intended for environments with self-changing software or that normally creates executables such as some web or mail servers. Unlike integrity monitoring, which monitors any file, application control looks only for software files when examining the initial installation and monitoring for change. Software can be Windows applications, exes, .com, .dll, .sys, Linux libraries like a .so file and other compiled binaries and libraries, Java .jar and .class files and other compiled byte code, PHP, Python, and shell scripts, and other web apps and scripts that are interpreted or compiled on the fly, Windows PowerShell scripts, batch files, and other Windows-specific scripts, and for example, WordPress and its plugins, Apache, IIS, Nginx, Adobe Acrobat, App.war, and Userbin SSH would all be detected as software. Application Control checks a file's extension to determine whether it's a script. Additionally, on Linux, Application Control treats any file with execute permissions as if it's a script. On Windows computers, application control tracks changes on the local file system, but not on network locations, CD or DVD drives, or USB devices. Application control is integrated with the kernel on Linux computers and file systems, so it has permissions to monitor the whole computer, including software installed by root or administrator accounts. The agent watches for disk write activity on software files and for attempts to execute software. To ensure application control is right for your environment, make sure to check out the links in the video description for more information. Once machines have been identified in your environment that will have application control enabled, adjust those machine policies or edit machines individually to turn on application control. After the module is turned on, a baseline inventory of the server will be built, including all applications installed on the machine as well as scripts that may be stored on the endpoint. This baseline can be recreated at any time by turning application control off, allowing the policy to send to the machine, and then turning the module back on. Application Control will consider software scripts that are on the machine that were written to the disk prior to the module being turned on as part of the inventory. As you can see in my lab here, I've turned on Application Control on a test server and the baseline is built. When turning on Application Control, you'll also want to specify the appropriate enforcement mode for your environment. There are two options to choose from. Block unrecognized software until it is explicitly allowed or allow unrecognized software until it is explicitly blocked. The first option will limit any new software scripts from running on an endpoint, while the second option will allow them to run. With both options, the execution of unrecognized software will get logged as an event for the module. From the event, you have the option to add the application to the blocked or allowed list. To demonstrate application control at work, I will copy a Python script to a Linux server in my lab. The contents of this script is very basic and runs the yum update command to update apps installed on the server. While the enforcement mode is set to blocked, the script is not allowed to run. Since the script did not exist on the server at the time of the software inventory being created, it is blocked. If I turn the application control module off, then back on, the inventory is rebuilt to include the script. When I execute it this time, it runs successfully. I will now place a different copy of the same script with a different file name on the server while it is in allowed mode to show the events logged and how to allow it to run. I'll execute the script and it's allowed to run. Now I'll go review the application control events for that machine and I have a new event logged. If I open this event, I have the option to add the application to the allowed list or block the app from executing in the future. It's recommended that when first enabling application control in your environment to start with allowing unrecognized software until it is explicitly blocked. This will help avoid interrupting normal operations in your environment and after the module has been running for a period of time, the unrecognized software can be reviewed under the events for a machine or from the actions page in the Deep Security Manager. Once the appropriate applications have been approved to run, you can then switch to block mode. When you install patches, upgrade software, or deploy web applications, application control will detect them. Depending on your setting for how to handle unrecognized software, this could block that software until you use the actions tab to create allow rules. 
To avoid extra downtime and alerts during deployment and maintenance windows, you can put application control into a mode designed for maintenance windows. While maintenance mode is enabled, application control will continue to block blacklisted software, but it will allow new or updated software to run and automatically add it to the computer's inventory whitelist. Once all software changes have been completed or new applications have been added, maintenance mode can be turned off to return application control to its normal operating behavior. Once you've added your first block or allow rule to a machine in deep security, either from events that occurred on a machine or from the Actions tab in Deep Security, a rule set will be created for that machine in the DSM. On the Actions tab, you also have the ability to see details for apps that were registered as unrecognized software, and the ability to see a list per machine for unrecognized software. If a particular application needs to be allowed for all machines in an environment, the Actions page can be sorted by Group by File Hash, and you can use the Allow All button for that app or file to allow it on all machines where it has been unrecognized. The initial application inventory for a machine cannot be reviewed from the DSM, but the individual rule sets can be seen from policies, common objects, rules, then application control rule sets. If changes need to be made to a rule set to block an application that may have been allowed previously, open the properties of the rule set, then go to the Rules tab to make adjustments. In this next section, we'll review a basic API Git request to pull rule sets from the Deep Security Manager for review purposes. The Deep Security API is also the only way to create and apply shared rule sets to multiple machines in your environment. To find the hash values for rules in a rule set using the API, first you'll need an application that's capable of performing HTTP requests against your Deep Security Manager. I typically use an application called Postman since it's free and has an easy to use interface. Another prerequisite you'll need is an API key, which I'll step through generating in this video as well. If an API key already exists in your system for other operations, then it's not necessary to proceed with this step. To generate the API key, we'll go to Administration, User Management, API Keys. We'll click New, then give the API key a name. We'll select a user role, which I'm going to select Full Access. I'll leave Language and Time Zone as they are, and also not going to specify the key to expire. I'll click Next, and copy the API key to my clipboard to store in a safe location. Now that we have an API key, we're ready to set up Postman to make requests to the DSM API. In my Postman workspace, I'll go to the Headers tab and create two entries. The first will be for API Secret Key, and the second will be for API Version. The value for API Secret Key will be the entire API key we just created, and the value for API Version will be V1. After adding these two items to my headers, I'm ready to begin making calls to the API. To start, I can make a general call for all rule sets in my DSM by using a GET request to the URL HTTPS, the DSM name and port, slash API slash rule sets. After sending this request, I receive back the information on the screen. Since I only have one machine with application control enabled in my lab, I don't have many results returned. In the results though, I have more information I can use for pulling more info from the API. In the rule sets, I can find the ID of the rule set and create it in last updated times. If I take the ID and place that in the URL of the GET request followed by slash rules, I am returned the hash values of the rules that make up the rule set with the action to be taken for that application. I've included links to additional documentation in the video description that provide detailed information for using the Deep Security API to customize the application control module and rule sets. We've now enabled application control, set the different enforcement modes, enabled and disabled maintenance mode, changed rule sets from the actions page and from events of a computer, and also use the Deep Security API to pull application rule set details. If you have any questions about configuring application control or need assistance with any aspect of the module, feel free to reach out to our support team and we'd be glad to help. Make sure to check out the links in the video description for more information about using application control. Thanks for watching.